Hello everybody and welcome to my Afterthoughts video regarding the fantastic movie Rocky. I can't believe it, I finally have seen the first, the original Rocky movie and I have to say I am blown away. I absolutely 100% love this movie. It's probably one of the best movies I have ever seen. Really, really fantastic. So happy. Um, the reason why I love this movie so much is mainly because of the character Rocky. I mean, wonder, what a wonderful character, just amazing. And of course, the story, which all comes back to the writing, of course. Really brilliant writing, if not even close to genius, I have to say. Now, Rocky is definitely a multi-dimensional character, and you know, Unfortunately, we don't see that that often in those newer movies they make nowadays. They just give you a character and they tell you, oh, there's a lot of traffic going on, gee. So in the newer movies, they just give you a character and somehow tell you, well, relate to him or her and sympathize for him and her and go on a journey with him and her without giving you really any substance or any reason why you should follow this character. And I tell you, if I watch a movie and I don't connect with the main character, I turn it off after a while because there's nothing in it for me, you know. But Rocky, boy, oh boy, it's exactly the opposite. I mean, how could you not fall in love with Rocky? It's funny because it almost seemed they used like three quarter of the movie to just establish the character. And then the last quarter was the payoff for the audience and it worked brilliantly, I have to say. I mean, the writing was fantastic. They start out showing Rocky in this underground boxing uh, event, you know, he's uh, beating his opponent to a bloody pulp and it's very brutal and savage, but he does it pretty much after he gets headbutted by the other guy, which is illegal, you know, so he kind of gets back at him. So he comes across as this vicious, brutal boxer. But then after that, the next scene, he goes home. We learn that he's dirt poor. You know, he gets 40 bucks for this fight to begin with. But then he interacts with his animals, you know, with the turtles. And he talks to the turtles, he talks to the fish, and it just shows you a real sensitive side that kind of came unexpected. You know, having this ruthless boxer and then he interacts with those animals. It shows you the sensitive side and how could you not fall in love with Rocky at this point, you know. But there's so much more to come. He goes to the pet shop, interacts with animals again and he shows this interest for this overly shy woman, you know. And that's so endearing to watch it. Then we learn about his... Um, um, other part of his life where he tries to make money working for this loan shark and he's kind of this debt collector and he should break people's thumbs but of course Rocky is way too good um, way too good-hearted he can't break some deadbeats thumb you know because Rocky relates to those guys they don't have any money he doesn't have any money and and of course he is not this brutal guy with no integrity or no conscience, you know. So he lets the guy go, he, he takes as much money as he can. He doesn't even take his jacket, you know. And that tells you a lot about Rocky's character right there, you know. And then Paulie, Paulie, you know. Instead of beating Paulie up because he's an asshole all the time, he accepts him the way he is. He's still friends with him. And again, that tells you a lot about Rocky's character. And then he's, uh, Oh, his date he has. I mean, when he sweet talks Adrian, you know, he talks to the door because she is locked in the room. I mean, how fantastic was that scene? The way he talks to her and being so insecure about it and feeling awkward and the way he played it, just fantastic. And then of course, the entire date and they end up kissing. I mean, who would have expected that? And that scene was just so sweet and so raw and real and sensitive. It was just fantastic. Really loved that scene. And another scene I loved was with this old man, you know, the, the coach. He goes to Rocky's apartment and tries to convince him that he should be his manager, you know. And, and Rocky, 
you know, he's not interested. He's holding a grudge and he would like to throw this old man out, but you know, Rocky is better than that. Rocky, even though he's, he's half a bum, he calls himself that at one point, he doesn't throw the old man out. He lets him talk and, and just hopes that he will leave by himself at one point. And then finally, the old man leaves and Rocky just expresses what he was, you know, he's biting his tongue all the time. And finally the old man is gone and then he starts yelling and screaming in his apartment alone, just expressing all his frustration. And that was one of my favorite scenes. You know, it again, it shows how classy Rocky is to not scream in front of the old man. He waits until he's gone and then he lets it out. And that was just so heartbreaking to, to listen to that. And then he chases after him and they make up, you know, on the streets, they shake hands and, and it's just fantastic. Or Rocky talking to this young girl, trying to give her some advice that she should, uh, you know, take care of her reputation. She doesn't want to establish this reputation as being a whore or whatever. And all the girl does in the end is like, you know, um, screw you, creepo, you know. <laughs> and then endearing again, Rocky walks away and he's talking to himself, talking that, uh, you know, yeah, right, you you creepo, who are you to give anybody advice, you know? And that's just those, those honest moments Rocky has with himself, you know? He knows he's a nobody and, and he knows he's not the smartest guy. He calls himself a half deadbeat and a moron, and, but he still, he makes fun of it because he, he is not hiding who he is, you know? He, he is comfortable with himself and, knowing that he's not the smartest guy he still has a very good attitude in life he's whistling when he's walking to the pet store and stuff like that so really really fantastic and then of course the last scene you know or, or let's say the scene the, uh, the scene the night before the big fight when he sits at adrian's bed or uh, his bed adrian is there and he says that I can't beat him. I can't win against Apollo Creed. Who am I kidding? I'm not even in his league, you know? It really dawns on him and the reality and the truth sets in that he, deep inside his heart, he does not believe that he can actually win, which is, you know, very close to the reality, the way we as the audience perceive it as well, you know? And maybe some people would say, well, no, that's the wrong attitude. You have to believe in yourself. You have to tell yourself that you can win against Apollo, but whoever says that doesn't really understand Rocky, you know, because Rocky is way too honest with himself. And if he, deep in his heart, does not believe that he can actually win, then that's, that's the way it is. And, and he is not shy voicing that, you know. But then again, instead of just going them there and losing the fight, he sets a new goal. A goal that he actually can believe in, and that's going 15 rounds, you know, going the distance, because nobody else has gone the distance, and that becomes his new goal, and he really honestly believe, believes that this could be possible. If he gives it all, it could be possible, and he just wants to stand. When the last bell rings, he wants to stand, and therefore, the first time in his life, he can prove to himself that he is not just a bum from the neighborhood, you know? That's what the movie is really all about. And therefore, this is one of the most important scenes of the entire movie, in my opinion. But then I read on one of those trivia pages that the producers at one point said, yeah, we don't really need to shoot the scene. I don't know if they were running late or something, but they thought this scene is not that important. Let's just leave it out. And Stallone was like, whoa, 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 no, 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 we need that scene. This is one of the most important scenes, you know? And, and then they decided to do it. And I think Stallone did it like in one take and then they moved on, you know? But just the thought that there would be a producer saying that, yeah, we don't really need that scene, just tells me that some of them have no idea about storytelling or psychology or relatability, you know? I mean, how could you pass up that particular scene, you know? Ay, ay, ay. You know, I, I think that there's a piece of Rocky in all of us, 
you know? Or do you think there is any human being on this planet who has never struggled with self-worth? You know, asking yourself, am I good enough? Am I worthy of this? Am I worthy of that? Have I achieved enough in my life? You know, those are questions everybody at one point or another has. Self-doubt and all that stuff. So that's what that scene was all about, self-worth. And, you know, for him, it wasn't really about getting all the glory and proving to everybody else that he's not a bum, even though that's important too, you know, but it was about proving it to himself, you know? And he clearly shows that in the way he reacted after he achieves his goal of going the distance. He's not bragging and say, hey, I'm the best. I, I went 15 rounds with this guy. No, he did not care about that because he went the distance and all he cared about was Adrian. And he was screaming out, Adrian. That was just, man, just so amazing, you know? And I agree with all the people who say, this is not really a boxing film. It's a love story. Yes, absolutely, 100%. It's a love story. But on top of that, it is about self-worth. And that was just the, the perfect script. And I loved it so much. And I can't wait to see the second one. And of course, there would be also a lot of trivia stuff I read, pages after pages, interesting stuff, you know, but you guys probably know it all anyway. And I know it too now. Things like that, he wrote it, the script in like two or three days, and then there were nine extensive rewrites. And uh, they offered him 350,000 bucks, but he turned it down because he said, I have to play Rocky, otherwise I'm not gonna give the script. And that was, of course, the best decision an actor has ever made you know that's fantastic and he tried to sell his dog you know and the ending of the script was different before and so on and so on. there's a lot of trivia stuff that is very 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 interesting he only had on the box in his account or whatever but um yeah so that's interesting to know but my afterthoughts were mainly about the character of rocky and of course the story absolutely loved it Thanks for watching and I will see you at the next one. Okay, bye-bye.